Creating fades in Pro Tools is easy. First, just place your mouse into the top left hand or top right hand corners of any audio clip. When you do this, you'll see that your cursor becomes a little square icon. If you left click and hold, or single touch and hold on your trackpad, and then drag inward, you can create a fade. A fade does one or two things. It either lowers the sound all the way and gradually cascades it up, or takes the maximum volume of your audio clip and fades it down until there's no sound at all. You can delete a fade by taking your grabber tool and placing it in the bottom half of where your fade is indicated and clicking one time. Once your fade is highlighted, just hit the delete key and you can delete any fade. You can also create fades with a keyboard shortcut. With your selector tool, place your playhead anywhere in the audio clip and either type D to fade in or G to fade out. Any of these fades can be resized once they've been made. If you place your cursor into the inside of the fade, right along the edge of the fade line, you'll see an inward facing bracket. If you left click and hold, you can then drag the fade to make it shorter or make it longer. On the other side of this line, you'll see another bracket. This doesn't change the length of the fade, but rather continues to trim the clip, so it will make the clip longer or shorter while maintaining the same length of fade time. You can change the shape of any of these fades by placing your cursor right in the middle of the fade, and you'll see that you get that fade box once more. If you left click and hold and drag either left or right, you can change the shape or curve of the fade. The default fade shape for Pro Tools is a linear fade. This is represented by this diagonal line coming from the bottom of this box all the way to the top corner of the fade. What shape you use is largely preferential and aesthetic, but generally speaking, a logarithmic fade, that's the shape of the fade that you're seeing right here, is a little bit better for editing human speech, as the beginnings of our words often have this shape when we're creating sound with our mouths. In addition to fading in or fading out sound, you can also crossfade sound. Here I have a clip with some music and a clip of the ocean. If I place these two clips next to each other, it would sound like this. It's a very sudden transition, not aesthetically appealing at all. If I go to the bottom left hand or bottom right hand corners of any of these touching clips, we'll see that I get a new icon. This is my cross fading icon. If I left click and hold and drag left or right, I can create a fade blending these two clips together. If we listen to the transition now, we can now hear that the transition is significantly smoother and less caustic. You can adjust the properties of fades in one other way. If I double click with my grabber tool on the bottom of any of these fades, it'll open up a fade dialog box. When I do this, I see another way that I can change the shape of the fade by clicking and dragging here in this line. And this behavior is largely the same as we did earlier by clicking in the middle of a box and dragging left and right. We also have other options for affecting the shape of the curve by choosing equal power, equal gain, or choosing different shapes. Again, a lot of this is largely aesthetic, but I do have one recommendation for crossfading. 
If you're crossfading two clips of audio of the same content, maybe it's ambient sound that you're mixing together or anything like that, using this crossfade with a linear shape, you can potentially hear a slight dip in volume right in the middle of the crossfade. That sometimes can be distracting depending on the content that you're crossfading. To circumvent this, double click with your grabber tool to open up the fade dialog box and choose equal power. This will make sure that there's no dip in volume when the crossfade is happening. This yields a much smoother transition than the previous linear crossfade, which has a very noticeable dip in volume in the center of the transition. You can also crossfade across tracks. I can simply use my selection tool to click and drag a time selection, then drag that tool down to the other track and highlight across multiple tracks. Once I do this, I can simply type the F key, and that will create fades on both clips equally according to the selection of time that I've made. This is a very easy way to crossfade elements across different tracks. Of course, all this is are two fades that we could have drawn out manually as well. If we select the fades and double click, we'll see that we're still presented with the same crossfade dialog box. And here I can choose equal power and it will change the shapes of all the fades, even though they're on different tracks. The examples we've been seeing have been largely aesthetic, fading in music, fading in or out ambient sound, but you can use fades for correcting dialogue as well. In this example, uh, morally, intellectually, and otherwise. If I wanted to get rid of the uh and leave only morally, I could simply trim that away. Morally, intellectually, and otherwise. But we'll notice that the M starts somewhat unnaturally. It just begins, and you can even hear a little bit of a click in the beginning. Morally, intellectually. Because this is sound just starting out of the blue, and that's not how it happens in nature. So if I wanted to ease this transition, I could use a small fade. Now this is different than an aesthetic fade. This is not the kind of fade that I want to hear happening. I just want to reshape the word, or specifically reshape the letter M in the word, so that it cascades up as naturally as it would if I was saying it. So here, just a small fade can help do that. Morally, intellectually, and otherwise. Now that's certainly a less sudden transition. Morally, intellectually, and... But I can still hear the sound fading in a little bit. And as I mentioned earlier, sound really doesn't ascend in a linear way like this. This is a good opportunity to change the shape of that fade. So if I get my fade tool, left click and hold, and drag to the left a little bit, I'm going to change the shape of the fade curve to a logarithmic fade. And when we listen to this now, morally, intellectually, and otherwise, and then M, morally, cascades in the same natural way it would as if you were saying it, only now we don't have the um to worry about. Morally, intellectually, and otherwise, and then if I feel like I'm cutting a little bit too much of the word out, I can keep the fade the same size and place my bracket not on the inside, that changes the length of the fade, but rather I want to change the edit, so I'll place the cursor on the outside, left click, and just drag it out a little bit, and let's listen to it again. Morally, intellectually, and otherwise, and then... And I'm starting to get a little bit more of that M back into the word. Adjusting fades to correct speech gets easier the more you do it, but it does take some finessing. So if you don't get it right the first time, I wouldn't feel too frustrated about that. 
uh, we would be ready. I can get rid of the uh in the exact same matter. We would be ready. Cut out my uh, delete it, drag my clip back over, add a small fade to correct we would be, or the w in the we. I'll zoom in, get my tool, drag to the left a little bit, correct the shape, and now. And do something for ourselves economically, we would be recognized and accepted by others. And that's an easy way to correct any speech anomalies that you might want to remove from any recorded clips that you have. Another use for fading might be in a situation like this. In this recording, and for the storage location of your project, you want to manually set a destination so the projects are going to... If when I was editing this, I decided I wanted a little bit more room between these phrases, I could make an edit and then separate the two clips. But if we listen to what's happening now, there's a lot of background ambient noise in this clip. And that becomes very evident when we add more space in between the clips. And for the storage location of your project, you want to manually set a destination so the projects are going... A lot of times when you're editing speech, you might need a pause like that in the particular edit that you're doing. But that absence of sound, this blank space to the listener, sounds like falling into some kind of a black hole where the environment suddenly disappears and can make for a fairly uncomfortable listening experience. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of ambient sound from the recording that I made. Hopefully you've recorded a lot of the environment that you did any of these interviews in. And I've got a small piece of sound here. At the end and beginning of each of these clips is just a little bit of ambient sound. Location of your project. You want to manually set a destination. So what we want to do is create a small fade, not over my voice, just over that ambient sound. I want to make sure that the sound I'm using for the transition isn't overlapping a lot of the audio because that's going to create double the noise. If I have ambient sound here and ambient sound there, that's a lot of extra noise. What I want to do is not add extra noise, but kind of tie it all together so there's no drop in tone between the edit that I'm making. So I'm going to drag in a fade that's the same size fade as the clip just above it. Now let's listen. Of your project, you want to manually set a destination. So it's starting to get a little bit more smooth. There's no drop in environment, but there's still a little bit of drop in tone when these are crossfading. I can fix that by selecting my fade with my grabber tool, just by left clicking so I can select it, and shift and select the fade in the clip below it. Now I'll just double click on my fade and it opens up the crossfade dialog box and choose equal power. I'll repeat this for the other group of fades. And let's listen to our transition. Location of your project. You want to manually set a destination. So, and it's starting to sound even more transparent. These are the types of considerations you need to make when you're editing dialogue. Ideally, you have a minute, two minutes of ambient sound, no matter where you record. And if you're recording remotely, ask the person recording on the other end, if they're able to do so, to just sit still and quiet in the room with the device they're recording with and just record the space for a minute or two so you have that extra footage to edit with. Ideally, your ambient sound recordings just sound like this. They're just the environment. It could be the hum of a refrigerator. It could be the blowing of an air conditioner. It could be people talking in the background. Try to get as much of it as you can, and it can really help when you're editing dialogue. And that's how you can fade and crossfade in Pro Tools.